G'day all, welcome back to the channel. This is the Valantex RC Phoenix 2400. It's a 2.4 meter wingspan glider. I bought the PNP version. You can get it in kit version as well if you want to put your own gear in it, but I, I decided I'd get the PNP version that has all the servos and motor installed. ABS plastic fuselage, 2.4 meter class of wingspan, and it's click and plug easy assembly for the wing attachments. Plan will be to get a Speedy B F405 wing, light controller for it, and all the other goodies that are needed as well to make this a, a good FPV platform with the flight controller. So what we'll do, let's pop it open, have a look inside the box. I haven't actually opened it yet, so it'll be the first time for me as well. Everything's pretty well packaged up here. So that's how it's all come in. It looks looks well packaged anyway. Got some nice hinges in the rudder here. You'll see that, those little plastic hinges. And the elevator too has also got four hinges, which is pretty cool. And there's your wings, these are big wings. I must say, they're big wings. Uh, got two servos, one for the flaps, one for the aileron. And they're all so hinged too, so everything's got its own little hinges three hinges in the elevator, an uh, aileron or a flap, which is which, no, that'd be an aileron, that'd be a flap there. Two spars by the look of it. Bit of an off-white compared to the, compared to the wing. Hope you can see the difference in the color. So it's not as, not as vibrant white the fuse as, it, as the wings. The wheel on the back, it's rubber, a rubber wheel. Interesting piece, you can actually take it apart too. You've got a heap of screws up the side here, so it looks like you can take it apart. We've got two servos here. I'm not sure whether they're metal or plastic. So the elevator is one piece, one servo, and the rudder is the other. All right, so the fuse is here. The other piece, it's under here. I actually thought that was uh, a full piece and you swapped it uh, with your platform for your FPV system here. So that's that's it there. Got a little latch, okay, so you got a little latch here. Pull up on that. So you got a pretty spacious cabin in here. Plenty of room for a battery. Um, a decent sized battery too if you really wanted to. I don't know if I'm gonna go that far with it, but being a glider, it should glide for a bit. The cables in here, I'm just gonna have to sort out which is which are they labeled. I think they're labeled too. Channel, channel four. Oh, this is labeled as for plugging straight into your receiver. Channel two. So just for a simple setup, it's all labeled for you anyway. If you want to, if you don't want to put a flight controller in it, that's pretty simple. ESC is underneath this here. I can't see what it is, what type of ESC it is. It looks like you can get to it. There's this, this platform here that your battery sits on. So if you ever have to change your ESC, which is pretty much right under this Velcro tape here, um, you've just got the four screws in this in this board to, to take out and then it should just pop up. So I believe the motor is a 1050 kV brushless motor which uses a 10 by 6 folding prop. And it just pops on there like that and if you don't want to fly with the FPV it's just neatly clips on there. It's a nice looking fuse I think. I just don't like, I don't really like how it's an off-white compared to the the wings but anyway so that's just a basic look at the at the craft we might look at setting it up now and just having a bit of a look at the size of it once it's all put together so we've got a bag of four screws we've got a bag of six screws we've got our control horns and screws as well in another bag more control horns this would be for the aileron and flaps I'd imagine so that's what's in the in the hardware bag as well as all of our control linkages here. So we're gonna start with the rudder and the elevator. So I'm just going by the manual here. 
and it's saying to install a vertical tail and horizontal tail to the fuse shown using six piece screws which will be this bag right here so these are all our control horns looks like they're all the same size so it doesn't really matter which one you use you just grab one they're all the same size all right it's showing we're going to be facing it with the flat edge of the horn facing towards the front of the plane so it's going to go in a bit like that and then we'll flip this over and we'll push this little piece on i'm not sure which way it goes on i think it goes on that way here make sure they're right in properly you'll hear them click in and that's pretty much it there i believe yeah that's it push it on as far as you can go so that's not going to come off of that it's always good too with your uh, control surfaces here just to give a bit of movement here It'll help loosen it a little bit all right so next i'm going to take the fuse up here and what we'll do this will just sit over the top and we got four screws here that screw the the aileron in just along here both sides but you got two screws here and two screws there and the two screws underneath that are holding the rudder on so that's your six screws all right so now we're going to go on to the control linkages install 115 millimeter push rod secure servo arm to servo with one of the four screws that you've got so it will be in the little bag here with the four screws so the shorter one's going to be your rudder and the longer one here will be your elevator there okay so i'm going to center the servos on the elevator and the rudder so i'm just going to use um, this little tool here to do that so we get them relatively centered and then we can fine tune them once we get the flight controller in and inav set up and all that sort of stuff but at this stage we'll just use this to get them get them roughly centered up okay so channel four is the rudder i've just centered that up with the servo tool so we're going to take our longest push rod here i'm going in a second hole from the from the top here let's get that out of the way for the moment so uh, we've centered that one so what we'll do is roughly get it i guess directly up and for this one i'm going to put it Okay, that way. Putting it from the third hole down from the top. Okay, so that's centered there. It's pretty good. Um, I'm not gonna know what that's gonna be like until we get it in the air and make the final adjustments once it's up in the air. But it's, it's within the ballpark. Okay, we're gonna do the same now to channel four, which is a rudder. Step four, it says secure the clevis to the hinge control horn by the second hole counted from the horn edge uh, and then tighten with the rubber ring. So we'll stick the rubber ring back on there. It's not a great deal of room for a big plane, to be honest. So that's good. And I think I'll go in from the third hole from the top on this as well. The thing is the manual shows different control horns to what's in the package so it's going to be a little bit of trial and error here so we'll center that up and just eyeball the rudder there so it's somewhere in the ballpark and push the horn onto the servo so that's both linkages sorted out i'll just test the rudder now with the with the uh, servo tester now. Again, you can hear the creaking. Really do hope that settles down because that's going to annoy me. So yeah, it could, could go back the other way a little bit. I'll, I'll adjust that one off camera, but yeah, it's a little bit out. I've just got to bring it back around just a tiny little bit. The closer you get everything, now will make it a lot easier when you're doing your fine tuning especially with your maiden too so you want to get things as close to you know exact as you can i'm 
gonna have to put something on though, maybe a little bit of a bit of oil, maybe a bit of singer oil or something like that might be good. That's annoying that is. Flick that over. We'll put all our servo horns on first. Alright, it says step seven, install the hinge control horns to reserve positions on the main wings. Then push the uh, 40 millimeter rod to the servo on each main wing through the third hole counted from the servo arm edge secured by the screw. So I'm gonna do it from the second hole from the top basically. Again, just, it's not too crucial. As long as you're in the ballpark, having the ailerons and the flaps a little bit up or down. You'll be able to fine tune that once you get it into iNav. Right, so that's that. Very creaky those hinges, I must say. All right, so I did the last wing off camera because I'm missing two control linkages. Now I'm gonna to have to contact Banggood and see what's going on there, whether I can get some more sent in because uh, not much I can do when I'm missing two control linkages. So as you can see there, sort of two, I don't know what, what the idea is with this short, short bit of spar here. It's, Wind up Push the wing gently into the two spars, making sure that it's fully connected. Um, when it is, you will hear a click to sound that it's been secured well. The wings just clip in like that, so that's a full size. It's a pretty big plane. It's a real shame though, I can't complete the build because of the two missing rod ends. The whole project's gonna be on pause until I can get a new lot of rod ends, but I will continue with the electrics and all that. I've looked over in the box, and um, they're the only ones I can't find. They're 40 mil rod ends, so I'll have to contact Banggood and just see what, what they can do there with me. Hopefully I can send another one pretty quick, or another couple pretty quick. But anyway guys, that's the basic build of the 2.4 meter wingspan Phoenix glider put together minus the control linkages on one wing. Um, look forward to the next one, which will be the electrics and setting up iNav in it. And hopefully after that we'll be able to maiden it with the control linkages that are here. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed that. Stay tuned and we'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.